Hey, listen, when most people think of success or failure, they think of these big, giant things. But failure is not an overnight experience, and neither is success. Failure is the result of failure to make the calls, failure to follow through, failure to say, I love you, failure to give 100%. That creates ultimate failure in life, the feelings we want to avoid at almost all costs. And yet success is also one step at a time. It's successfully making the call. It's successfully getting yourself up and following through. It's successfully making sure you make that unique contact. It's successfully breaking through the limits that used to stop you. It's the culmination of all those little successes over a lifetime that eventually creates a life that we have total pride and joy in knowing is our own. And I'm here to tell you that anything you focus on on a consistent basis, you put 100% of yourself into and you try and prove daily on, you will improve. You will get better. The problem is most of us in life do not control the power of our mental focus. In fact, most of us focus on things like, well, gosh, how come my life isn't working? How come this always happens to me? And if you focus on that enough, that's exactly what you'll experience in life. Whatever we focus on consistently, we tend to manifest in our lives. Don't you already believe that? My hallucination is you already do or you wouldn't have picked up a tape program like this. The key is getting ourselves to live by these factors. You know, most people in life major in minor things. That is, they're focused on how to make a living instead of how to design their life. You may be wondering what drove me to want to really study success in this level of depth. In fact, a lot of people say to me, Tony, how did you become so successful? Well, I'm complimented by the statement, but my response usually is the same thing that drives all of us to succeed. One of two experiences, either inspiration or desperation. For me, it was more desperation. I grew up in an environment I did not like, and it started back as far as high school for me. I remember looking around and being dissatisfied. And by the way, if you're dissatisfied with some area of your life right now, instead of being frustrated, get excited. Because I got to tell you something, until you get dissatisfied, you won't do anything to really make your life at another level. Dissatisfaction is a gem. If you're totally satisfied, you're going to get comfortable, and then your life begins to deteriorate. But I found myself dissatisfied with my environment. I didn't like what I saw growing up. I saw my father working extremely hard as a salesman, 40 or 50 hours a week, and yet most of the time we were broke, and I didn't understand why. I remember what that did to him emotionally. And that drove a lot enough pain inside of me that I thought to myself at that time, I don't want to ever have my family have to go through this. And I don't want to have to go through it myself ever again. I thought someday I'm going to master financial success so I can not only help myself, but the people around me. And that was a driving force for my success in that area. I remember going to high school and I was not a real popular kid, but I really loved people and I loved being around them. And I wanted everybody to like me. And a lot of people did, but I wasn't the most popular kid in school. But you know, I thought someday I'm going to meet the most popular kid in school and I'm going to find out what makes him so popular. He's probably one of the nicest, most warm and genuine people you could ever meet. I remember the day I met this kid. <laughs> he treated me like I was dirt. Like how dare I enter his space. And I thought, how could somebody who's this rude be this successful in having people like him? And it made me want to study what makes people like other people. I remember looking around at people in relationships. People who've been married 5, 10, 15 years who weren't just hanging out together. They still had that passion, that drive for each other. They really loved each other 100%. It's like they were newlyweds. I remember one day going to my mother and saying, how come this is my fourth father? I'm just curious. <laughs> and she told me an explanation I didn't quite understand at the time. But I can tell you one thing. It motivated me to want to make relationships work. So out of all of these things, what happened for me in my mind is I said, look, I don't like the way my life is, I want to make it better. And so somewhere in my mind, I linked up that what I should do is study success. That if you want anything in life, you got to make it a study. If you want to be successful, you got to study it, not leave it to chance. If you want to be happy, you got to study happiness. If you want to be wealthy, you've got to study wealth. If you want to be healthy, you got to study health. You can't just hope that things will turn out okay. You can see what hoping does for most people. Most people don't have what they want, and they just keep hoping it'll change. The bottom line for me is I went out and started studying success like a madman. I believe that if you will immerse yourself and focus on anything, you're going to get good at it. And so I decided to get good at understanding how to make my life work. And I went out and read almost 700 books in the area of human development. Everything from your basic positive thinking to your more esoteric forms of change when I thought I was so sophisticated. The point is this. As I read all this material and I listened to tapes constantly, in my car, anytime I could, I tried to dump some good stuff into my mind. I went to seminar after seminar after seminar. Many of them were lousy. 
But my attitude was, hey, if I go to a seminar and all I get is one idea, it's worth my attending. Or if I go to a seminar and all it does is tell me what I already know, but I hear it another time and now maybe by hearing it again, I actually now use it, what a concept, then maybe I can make my life work. And so I went for that strategy that repetition is the mother of skill. And I heard enough and I read enough and I watched enough and I listened enough and I poured so much good stuff in that you can guess eventually good stuff started coming back out. In fact, within a short period of time, I became totally successful. <laughs> now we all have our own definition of success, but you can guess what mine was back then, growing up pretty poor financially. I mean, the answer was money. I figured, hey, if you make enough money, it'll solve all of life's problems. Is that true? Of course not. But if you make enough money, at least you can arrive at your problems in style. <laughs> you drive up in your limousine to handle your problem. It's a whole nother world. Seriously, my point is this. I had really made it, I thought, by the time I was 19 years old. I went out and just used massive action. I read all these books, I listened to all this material, and I went out and just applied everything I could. In a short period of time, I had this big company. I was written up in newspapers and magazines as this young entrepreneur. They called me Wonder Boy. My ego was exploding. And I had what I thought success was at that time in my life. I had a lot of money. I was making about $10,000 a month in income, which for a 19-year-old kid, for anyone, seems like a lot of money, seems like a lot of success. But something interesting happened. And the interesting thing that happened was I'd never had that level of success before. I'd never had that many people liking me and acknowledging me. I'd never had that much money. I'd never had that kind of experience. It was beyond my comfort zone. Now, I'm not talking about consciously now. See, consciously, I thought I wanted more and better and all these other kinds of things. But subconsciously, I believe that most of us have a subconscious idea of what we think we deserve. I mean, imagine it as if it's a thermostat attached to your brain. If we have a thermostat in this room and we set it at 68 degrees and it's not hot enough in here, things aren't moving, it's not warm enough, and the temperature drops down to 62 degrees, what's going to happen? The heaters kick on. All of a sudden, what happens? Anxiety. Your brain says, hey, we got to make it better than this. This isn't good enough for me. And sure enough, all of a sudden, you get this push, this drive to change things. And that's what happens in life when it's not good enough. When your life does not represent right now what you think it should be like. What's interesting, though, that most people don't realize is it happens on the other side, too. What do I mean? I mean, if you set it at 68 degrees and all of a sudden things start going really well, hey, it starts heating up in here. We start cranking. If it gets up around 72, 73 degrees, what happens in this room? The air conditioners kick on and you begin to sabotage your own success and you drop right back down to where you subconsciously think you deserve to be in your relationships, in your economics, in your level of acknowledgement. Does this make sense to you? It doesn't make sense intellectually, but it does make sense when you start studying how human beings behave. And that's what I did. I began to sabotage my own success. How? I started to not show up for key meetings. I started to treat people harshly who didn't deserve to be treated harshly at all. I started eating like I was going out of style. I was never into drugs or alcohol, but I used food like it was a drug. If I didn't like how I felt, well, I just eat something. I was going to change how I felt. But then I looked in the mirror and I was getting fatter and I felt worse. So I ate some more <laughs> and it just didn't work. I got caught up in this vicious circle so much so that within two and a half months, I gained 38 pounds. That is not easy to do. You have to eat tons of food and not move very much to pull that off, which I managed to do. The bottom line is this though. As I began to sabotage, it didn't stop with me. It started to affect everyone around me. I fired almost everyone in my company. I only had about three employees left and I'd fired them too. But every time I go there, you're fired. They go, I know. And they just keep on working, <laughs> thinking sooner or later things would work out and I'd become sane. I went totally broke financially and I moved into a little 400 square foot bachelor apartment in Venice, California. No kitchen, washing my dishes in the bathtub. Waking up each morning with major goals, things like, what am I going to eat today? And what's going to happen to Luke and Laura on General Hospital, <laughs> my favorite program at the time. So how do I get to be here with you? How did my life turn around? Well, the answer is, it wasn't just by more information. It wasn't just by more technology, although that made a difference. What made the big difference for me is a friend came by, someone I hadn't seen in about two years. And the reason he came by to visit me and had to track me down is he couldn't call me on the phone because my phone was disconnected. At this point, my nickname had gone from Wonder Boy in the newspapers to just Boy. <laughs> I changed virtually everything in my life. 
from my emotions to my finances, from my confidence to my physical health. How did I do it? Well, I use what I call the ultimate success formula. And here's what it is. It has four steps. If you want to create the success in your life, it always comes back to this. You can use whatever technology you want to reprogram yourself, but these are the four steps for success. Step number one, you've got to know your outcome. In any situation in life, you've got to decide right now, what do I want out of this situation in my life? The more clear you are on what you want, the more you empower your brain to come up with answers. There's an old phrase that may have been overused, but I think it's pretty accurate. It says, clarity is power. You must get focused on what you want. And in this tape program, we have a goal setting workshop that's going to help you to get precisely clear on what you want in your life, mentally, emotionally, socially, spiritually, intellectually, so that you have something that's the driving force behind your behavior. How can you use this first formula to make a difference in your life right now? How could just getting clear on knowing your outcome help you? Well, I believe when you know your outcome, you've empowered yourself. I mean, let's say, for example, you're in the middle of an argument. And have you ever gotten caught up in an argument where you're so caught up in it that you forgot what you were even arguing for, but you knew you had to win? <laughs> I know I've been there. See, if in the middle of that argument you were to ask the question, hey, what's my outcome in this situation? You're going to probably find out your outcome is not to argue. The outcome you want is to resolve something. When you get focused on what you really want out of the situation, you empower your brain to use its resources to produce results right now. So get into that habit. The habit of asking yourself, what's my outcome? And throughout these 30 days, I'm going to constantly ask you, how can you use this? What I just said, what's useful about that for your life? What is your outcome in applying this in your own life? It's critical to continually focus on your target. Even if you're just going to buy a visit with a friend. On the way over to see a friend, ask yourself, what's my outcome? Maybe the answer is, well, just to have fun or to make my friend feel really appreciated and loved. Now, if you know that's your outcome, your chances of having more fun or making your friend feel loved go up a thousand percent versus if you just go over and hang out and wonder why you're bored. Now, I'm not saying you have to be so goal oriented that every minute you're trying to achieve something. I'm just saying it's useful to let your brain know the direction that you're heading. And everyone I know who succeeded had to start with getting clear on exactly what they wanted. Here's step two of the ultimate success formula. By the way, step one I did. I decided what I wanted physically, financially, emotionally, in my business. I looked at everything spiritually. And once I knew, I had the first stage of my personal power. Step two to tapping your power is you've got to use it. That is, you've got to get yourself to take action and move towards the achievement of your goals. Now, what most people tell me is, but I don't know what to do. I don't know. I never, what if I try and it doesn't work? All I can say to you is this. If you try and it doesn't work, you got an education. You're better off than where you were before because you now know what doesn't work. And you'll probably make a distinction or two that will help you succeed even more. Most people in life have no idea what they want. But worse, a few people know what they want, but they don't do anything about it. They just sit around and hope or say, someday, honey, we'll do this. Someday is now. Someday is here. I remember hearing a phrase years ago that said, the road to someday leads to a town of nowhere. It's a place you don't want to end up in. So you've got to get yourself to take action. How do you do that? You decide. I hear people all the time saying, well, gosh, how do I change my life? And my answer is decide to. Make a decision right now you're not willing to settle for anything less than you can be. That you're not willing to live the way you're living right now, no matter how good it may seem, that you're going to push yourself to the next level. Demanding more from yourself than anybody else could possibly expect is true power. And all it takes is deciding. Remember, the word decision in its original Latin root means to cut off from. When you decide, you cut off from any other possibility. The me. biggest trap that keeps me. people from taking action is their fear. Their fear of failure, their fear of success, their fear of rejection, their fear of pain, their fear of the unknown. The only way to deal with fear is face it. Look at eye to eye and take action in spite of it. I'm sure you've probably heard of some of the seminars I do in which we teach people how to break through their fears and take action. And at the end of the seminar, they get a chance to use what they've learned to overcome a major fear and literally walk through fire between 800 and 2,000 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, a lot of people think it's crazy. They go, why would you do a thing like that? Well, it's not to teach people new picnic skills, <laughs> and it's not mind over matter. Right now, you could walk through fire. I'm not encouraging you to. Make sure you hear me. But you could. It's absolutely possible. You don't need me to do it. You could also be up at 6 o'clock a.m. with total passion for living. You could also have the person of your dreams be in your life right now. You could also be earning what you're worth. You could also have more influence on your children than virtually anyone else. 
but few people do. It's not what we can do in life that makes the difference. It's what we will do. And we don't follow through because we don't know what we want oftentimes. And when we know, we're afraid to take action. Listen, fear can serve us. Fear isn't all bad. It'll make us pay attention as long as fear is a counselor and not a jailer. Make sure that you listen to your fear, make some more distinctions, and then get yourself to take action in spite of it. And I gotta tell you, breaking through fear is like anything else, it's like a muscle. In the beginning, if you try and lift a heavy weight, boy, you might say, gosh, I can't do this. But if you start small and you build every single day, for like 30 days, for example, then what's gonna happen is every day you get a little stronger, and pretty soon it becomes effortless to do what used to feel like it was impossible. It's time for you to develop the muscle of making decisions quickly and easily and following through on them. Here's the third key element to the ultimate success formula. Once you know what you want and you get yourself to take action, do your actions always work? Of course not. Most people in life fail much more often than they succeed. In fact, the most successful people are the most successful people because they failed more than anybody else. I mean, think about it. Think about it in baseball. In baseball, a Hall of Famer someone who's the best in the world at what they do in the area of baseball they fail seven times out of ten how'd you like to have a life like that bottom line is to get in the hall of fame they only succeed about 30 percent of the time they failed more than 70 percent of the time and you know what that's how life is too hey listen in doing this taping with you and talking to you personally i may not sound elegant all the time because i don't care what i want to do is get across to you i want you to get the message in your gut that's what matters to me. If I say something that doesn't work, I'll just move on to something else. And I ask you to try the same thing in life. Most people in life, out of their fear of failure, don't try anything at all. That's ultimate failure. you got to get yourself to take action. you got to get yourself to follow through. And you got to be willing to notice whether it's working or not. That's step three. Notice what you're getting from your actions. In other words, you know what you want. you got yourself to take action. Now notice, is it working? Am I getting closer to my goal or further away? Don't kid yourself or just keep taking action because after all, you work so hard to do it this way, I might as well keep on doing it. So you don't want to get locked into tunnel vision. Remember, flexibility is power. What you've got to do though is know what you're getting. I mean, a standard example is, have you ever had somebody come up and talk to you? And they're going on and on and on. And you're trying to be very polite and they mistake you're being polite. There's a way to speed up this formula. And that way is this. Instead of just knowing what you want and taking random actions, you can use what I call role modeling to accelerate the pace of your success. What I did is I said, okay, what do I want? I'm 38 pounds overweight. I want to lose this weight. I want to be 38 pounds lighter and I want to have more energy. I want to feel more vibrant in my life. You can tell by my energy level that I'm a real low energy person now compared to how I was then. Seriously, I decided what I wanted. And then what I did is I said, okay, I got to take action, but what action should I take? I didn't know. I tried dieting a zillion times, and you know what? It would work. I would lose weight, and then I'd gain it right back again. And I'd lose weight and gain it back again. So what I decided to do is instead of just taking some actions and sooner or later figuring it out, I decided to use a role model. I said, let me find someone who's already getting the results that I want, and let me find out what that person is doing and do the same things. That is, I believe that success leaves clues. That if people succeed, it's because they're doing certain things over and over and over again. And if we do the same kinds of things, if we plant the same kinds of seeds, we're going to reap the same kinds of rewards, regardless of our age or our background or our religion or our color or our gender. None of that matters. What matters is the law works for everyone. And if you apply it, it'll work, but you got to know what to do. And so this program is the result of me going out and modeling people that are successful. That is, instead of reinventing the wheel and having you and I keep doing trial and error on everything, I said, hey, let me find somebody who's already getting the results, find out what they do, do the same things, get the same results, speed up time. You've got to remember, knowledge is not power. Knowledge is potential power. I mean, don't you know someone who knows what they should do with their life, knows they should change their life, knows how they can change their life, and they still don't do it? You know somebody like that maybe intimately? like maybe you, for example, at times, then the bottom line is knowledge is not enough. We gotta get ourselves to follow through. So what did I do? I found somebody who had been overweight like me, had become thin and stayed thin for years. And I found out what this person did and I did the same things. I'm gonna teach you in this program what to do to do that. It wasn't just dieting, that's not enough. As a result of following through and taking the same actions, I lost 30 pounds in 30 days. I lost all 38 pounds in about seven weeks, and I haven't gone back. And the reason is, 
I didn't just change my diet. I learned to mentally condition myself to feel differently about certain foods I was addicted to, so I no longer had a desire for them, the things that used to push me over the edge. I did the same thing in the area of relationships. I found a man who had the woman of my dreams, and I talked to him and said, hey, how did you attract this woman? And I talked to her and said, why do you like this guy? You know, why are you in a relationship with him? And I began to find out certain things he did that made that relationship work. And I started applying some of the same things. And I did the same thing financially. I went from a place where I had no confidence in myself emotionally, feeling depressed, to a place of total strength, and financially, I mean, a measurable change, to say the least. I was broke living in my 400 square foot bachelor apartment. What happened? In less than 12 months, I moved to my 1,200 square foot apartment, major progress at the time, three times bigger, to about four months later, I moved to a 10,000 square foot castle, literally a castle built in 1925 with a big three-story turret overlooking the crashing waves of Del Mar, California. And I don't tell you this to impress you, I tell it to impress upon you how quickly you can make changes in your life if you learn to master this incredible computer between your ears called your brain. That's what we're going to study. We're going to study neurosciences, the sciences of success conditioning. That's what this whole program is about, and we're going to do it a little piece at a time so it's simple. If you will do that, the culmination of the 30 days, you will find that you've gone on a mental diet that will change your life forever. If success is really this simple, if you could go from being where I was years ago, broke in every sense of the word, emotionally broke, physically broke, socially broke, and financially broke, to wealthy in all those areas, meeting my dreams, becoming a millionaire in less than 12 months, if that's really possible, if it's really as simple as using your personal power and being flexible in your approach and modeling the most successful people, if it's really that simple, how come everybody doesn't do this? That's a good question. A lot of things in life are really simple, but people don't apply them because they get caught up in day-to-day -day stuff like, well, you know, I gotta pay my bills. They get caught up in making that living instead of designing the life. And they come to the end of their life and find out they lived only one-tenth of it. Not because they weren't intelligent, simply because they didn't get clear about what they wanted, they didn't get themselves to consistently take action and develop that decision-making, massive action muscle in their emotional body. They didn't vary their behaviors, and now they're stuck. It's not a place I think you want to be, otherwise you wouldn't have invested in this program and you wouldn't be taking the time to listen now. So what I'm asking you to do is break through those fears that stop you. And you know, the biggest one that comes up again and again, and we've already mentioned it, is failure. I want you to know that failure can be your best friend. I mean, think about it. The greatest successes in the world are people who often had so much pain from a failure that it drove them to much greater success. Did you know those little 3M stickers, for example? Those ones that you see that you can put there, I think they're called post-it notes. You can write on them and put them on something and take it right off instantly. Do you know that was a result of a massive failure by the chemist? He was working at the time to create an adhesive that would last forever. Something that you could never pry things apart with. And as a result, he came up with a stuff that didn't work at all. But he was smart enough to say, hey, what could I use this for? How could I use this supposed failure? And he turned it into a multi-million dollar business. Lee Iacocca, most people would agree, is one of the most successful role models in our country. Now I got a question for you. How come he's so successful? Because he's a wonder kid? Well, yeah, you could say that. He worked for a company called Ford Motor Company. And he worked his way through the ranks right up to the top. Worked his tail off, was driven. What really marked him? His ability to get people to take action. His personal power. He developed skill because he was willing to try almost anything. He wouldn't accept no for an answer. But you know what? He had a little run-in with a guy by the name of Ford. And he fired him. And it burned him pretty good. Now I got a question for you. Do you think when this company named Chrysler came by and they looked like for sure there was no way they could be turned around, do you think if he hadn't been fired by Ford that he would have taken it? You might say, oh, of course he would. That's the way Lee is. Well, I don't know. According to his wife, she said at the time, he said, honey, I don't think anybody could turn this thing around. She said, boy, well, I bet Mr. Ford will be real happy to hear that. That's all it took. He was so angry from the pain and failure of his past, quote unquote failure, that he was going to show him that it wasn't his failure, that Mr. Ford made the mistake. Another company that's mentioned, IBM. It all started because a guy by the name of Tom Watson, who worked for a competing company called NCR, got fired by the CEO there also. He got so mad, he said, I'm going to develop a company that will dwarf yours someday. See, welcome frustration. i got to tell you something. When I get frustrated, I've learned to get excited. I've learned to literally condition myself so that frustration creates excitement. You know why? Because when I'm frustrated, I know I'm about to have a breakthrough. It means my brain is searching. 
If I get confused about something instead of going, I'll never learn this, my response to that is, hey, I'm about to learn something. Because my brain is searching for a new answer, and if it keeps searching, it's going to come up with one. I believe the emotions that many of us consider negative, like frustration and rejection and pain, can be our greatest friends because they can drive us to success. You know what? I think one of the things that happens for a lot of people when they get successful is they get superstitious. It's like they work so hard for the success and they now finally have it, so all of a sudden they don't change, they don't vary their behavior, they kind of like want to stay the way things are. They get incredibly conservative and they miss out on the juice of life. Stay out of the trap. Listen, when people succeed, they tend to party. When they fail, they tend to ponder. Now the pondering, many times we create our greatest successes in life. Just remember, it's impossible to fail. If you try something and it doesn't work, just try something else and learn something from what you just did. As long as you learn something, you've succeeded. Something else I want to remind you of as well, and that is sometimes people say, well, gosh, I'm going to do these exercises. I know I'm going to be better physically and emotionally and psychologically and I'll feel more confident, but I want to work on my career. I want to take my business to the next level. I want a business program. Let me tell you what, personal power is one of the most powerful business programs because it deals with the source of all your business, which is you. When you're in better shape, suddenly you negotiate more effectively. When you're in better shape, your creativity flows. When you're in better shape, you're a better manager of people. That's why if you saw the infomercial, which is how I assume you got to this program, then you saw people like, for example, Bill Farley of Farley Industries endorsing this program, saying it was one of the best business programs they ever went through. Well, that's because Bill became a billionaire before the age of 40, all by using these personal power type of techniques. So I want you to know this is very business oriented. Or a Bill Nicholson, you know, he's a turnaround expert for major corporations. You know, in the early 80s, he took on a major corporation that was losing a million dollars a day and turned it around so that within four years, it was doing more than $4 billion in revenue and the highest net returns of the history of the company. So I want you to know that these people endorse it because it works. So if you're a little bit skeptical, I understand that. But understand, changing yourself is the first place to changing your career and changing your business. Right now, as this tape ends, I want you to do your first assignment. Really simple. Remember I told you, the way to build a muscle so that you're really strong is start small and build. So we're going to start with something really simple. I want you to think of two actions you've been putting off. Two things that you should do Two things that you need to do, but you keep putting it off. Maybe it's a phone call or two. Maybe it's somebody you, you've had some poor communication with and you need to clean it up, but you're not doing it. Maybe it's just going in the house and cleaning it up right now. Maybe it's some kind of report you need to do. I don't know what it is, but right now I want you to think of what are two actions you've been putting off that if you were to take them now, it would increase the quality of your life. Either simply would just increase the quality of your self-esteem because you feel good because you actually followed through, or maybe even more powerfully. What are two decisions or two actions you could take right now that would immediately change the quality of your life? Maybe it's to stop smoking. Maybe it's to eliminate certain kinds of food. But if you were going to do something right now that was going to change your life, what are those two actions? And what I want you to do is decide. Remember, to decide means to cut off any other possibility, to resolve once and for all, this is it. There's tremendous power in that. Start with something small if you want, and then build. But right now, write down two decisions you've made, and then take action on them immediately. I mean, right now. I mean, even before I finish talking here, stop the tape, pick up the phone, and make that call you've been waiting for. Do not put it off another minute. I don't care what it takes. There's power and momentum. I'm a big believer that once you set a goal, once you make a decision, you should immediately, in that moment, do something to start making progress towards it. That way you can't cop out later on or get caught up or lose your momentum. So please do it now. And I know not all things can be done right now, so maybe it's something you have to do tomorrow morning. But whatever you're going to do, make the decision and then commit to follow through and then check in tomorrow. Because this is the first step to grabbing your personal power. And remember, there's no way to fail. You might say, well, gosh, what if I do this and it doesn't work? What if I try this and it doesn't happen? Hey, what if I screw up? Then screw up big. Go for it. Do a big screw up because then you'll learn something. Hey, remember, success in life is the result of good judgment. Good judgment is usually the result of experience. Experience is usually the result of bad judgment. <laughs> so if you got some bad judgment and it doesn't work out, you'll learn something and it'll make you more successful in the future. Just go for it. Don't be afraid, make it happen. And you may say, well, that's such a little thing to do, I'll do it later. If it's little, then do it now. <laughs> Don't put it off, okay? I'm on your side. Hey, what I'm trying to be here for you is a good coach. You know, I don't care how successful you are, we all need a coach.